Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to talk about piriformis syndrome. This is one of the biggest clinical presentations I find with people coming in looking for treatment who are runners. Particularly people who do sort of distance running so the, the further the distance they do the more likely I'm, I am to see them for what they call piriformis syndrome. Basically piriformis syndrome is pain in around that posterior gluteal area here and around the buttocks. Often it can go just below into the top of the thigh. Piriformis syndrome basically just means pain in the gluteal area and sciatica just means pain down the posterior thigh. Um, so what I'm going to do, and this is the this is the information I give most of my patients who have um, piriformis syndrome, if that's what you want to call it. Um, two really good exercises that you can do, you can use to prevent it or minimize it. Two really good mobility exercises you can do to prevent or limit it, and then two stretches. So I find these six exercises work really well, and they tend to be the thing that will get people most relief. The first exercise I would do to strengthen up those gluteal region. So we're going to get in around that glute medius, glute minimus, and in around the glute maximus, and then into where we call the external rotators or the piriformis, and a couple of other external rotator muscles. So the straightforward, most basic exercise that you can use to get that is just a deep squat. So keeping the feet about shoulder width apart and just going down nice and far, get right down as far as you can. You'll find that the further down you get, the more intense you get in around that gluteal muscle. So try and keep the head and chest up, try and keep the back relatively straight if you can, and just get right down. If you can't keep that back super straight like I can when you get down, don't worry about it too much, as long as you get in that range of motion and really get to feel that glute area working. So just straight down and back up. So I've just got my feet about shoulder width apart, and I'm trying to push the weight evenly across the sole of my foot. So a little bit through the heel and a little bit through the forefoot as well. The second exercise I would use will be a band assisted clam. So the band is around my two feet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rework the stabilization on the standing leg and I'm going to work the muscle activation on the working leg. So I've got the band around both feet. I'm going to lift my right leg. Now, if you're off balance, you can use a wall. If you don't need to use the wall, I would say don't because the more balance you get, it stimulates, it simulates running much better if you're not using the wall. So you're really going to use the activation through the standing leg to raise that opposite leg. So straight up and down, up and down. When I do this, I like to do it like a running. So I use my arms like I'm running. And then as I bring that leg out, it's going to be opposite arm, leg going up with opposite arm going out. So up and down, that's it. Deep breath in and exhale as you lift and inhale as you bring it down that's it so straight away you feel that working in around those external hip rotators they're really starting to contract in order to get that leg to come up and on the standing leg we're activating to keep that pelvis stable basically Basically what happens when you run, if I was just to lift my right leg and nothing would happen on the left glute, I would get it to drop. That's what would happen. But because the, when I lift the right leg up, the left gluteal maximus contracts, that keeps this midline straight. So it keeps the pelvis from dropping. Okay, so imagine there, if I lift my right leg up, the left leg stays, hip stays straight. If I didn't have enough strength, it would drop. When you get to like the later stages of a marathon where you start to get really fatigued, every time you lift that leg, you see, I see this all the time, some runners, every time they lift, one leg is dropping in. And that leads to all sorts of low back pain, uh, anterior groin pain, and uh, valgus knee, so pain on the medial side of the knee. Really, when you see that happening, it's just a, a gluteal strength. Person wasn't doing enough squats or wasn't enough, doing enough strength and conditioning leading up to their marathon. Okay, so first exercise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna all, on all fours, so knees planted on the ground, hands planted on the ground, and then from there, I'm just gonna lift my right leg up, and I'm gonna stretch it out, and just point that toe back towards the back wall, as far as I can, push it right back. So what I'm doing is, I'm just really opening up the anterior aspect of the hip joint. Really pull the knee in then. So I'm really getting that joint to close, and then open, close, and then open. It's a very good core strengthening exercise as well, but really emphasize pushing that toe back towards the back wall. So you really get that hip 
to open and close. As runners, we spend a lot of time with this little bit of anterior pelvic flexion. So it tightens up the anterior part of the knee, of the hip. When that happens, the gluteal muscle, the external rotators, the piriformis, have to try to work a little bit harder to, to kind of get a bit of room in there. So if you can do that mobile, mobility exercise, give yourself a little bit of uh, mobility across the front of that hip, far less likely to suffer from piriformis type syndrome. The second mobility exercise I do then is a little bit more advanced than the first one. And this again is going to get mobility in around the anterior and posterior aspects of the hip joint. So I'm down on my honkers. So my, toe, my toes are on the ground. My heels are not flexible enough. So my heels are off the ground. And what I'm going to do is you can use a wall if you want. You can have a little chair to stabilize in front of you if you want or have something behind you. But I'm just going to bring this knee across my body to touch the ground, the right knee. And as I do, the left knee will externally rotate backwards. So it's internal rotation with the right hip, external rotation with the left hip. And then we can just bring it across. And as I go across, what I can start to do then is when I get down into that position, I can edge this one back just a couple of times, switch over, edge it back and switch over. And you can get a bit of fluidity, in, fluidity into it if you want, just to push it back and across. Doing that mobility exercise will give you lots of mobility across the anterior and posterior aspects of the joint. So in around the groin at the front and around the sacroiliac joint at the back. The first stretch that I would use in order to stretch out that gluteal region and the external rotators, to name just one, the piriformis, will be to lie back flat. I'm going to use my right leg. I'm going to bring the right ankle up onto the left knee. And then from there, just let that right knee push towards the ground ever so slightly. Again, you get a little bit of mobility across the front of the hip. And then from there, take that left leg and pull it in. And as you pull in, you'll feel that stretch across the posterior right aspect of that uh, hip joint. So you'll really feel the stretch going around that piriformis and through those gluteal muscles. Hold it there. If you want to intensify the stretch, bring your head up and just pull it all in together. And you can hold it with the head up. So you're getting flexion through the whole spine and really getting the external rotation coming into that um, right hip joint. Drop it down. The second stretch then that I would use to really get specific into that left piriformis will be to lay back flat. So I'm gonna work on the left side as I just said. I'm gonna bring my right leg slightly off the midline towards the media, so it's kind of crossing my body. I'm gonna bring my left leg over. So the left leg comes over, the left hand is behind to stabilize, and then take the right arm and just draw that left hip or knee across so you can really pull across like that and you'll feel that stretch coming around that whole external rotator muscle bulk of the left hip so i can feel it stretching through those gluteus medius glute minimus piriformis and all the other external rotators so that's pretty much it you got two strength exercises two mobility exercises and two flexibility exercises using the three of those different modalities um, once or twice a day over a couple of days will really help to bring down the symptoms of piriformis syndrome where you have the pain in around that glute um, going down to the top of the thigh. Um, let me know how they go. If you have any exercises that you think work better or that you would use in conjunction with that, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to learn a little bit more about what you guys are doing. Um, like I say, guys, run far, run fast, but most of all, run sensible.